Welcome to the Dell Storage Manager Day-to-Day -day Management video, Part 2, Managing SC Series Arrays. This video covers several of the daily management tasks for the SC Series Arrays performed using the new Dell Storage Manager platform. A brief introduction to the Dell Storage Manager interface was covered in Part 1 of this video series, so I will not cover it here. For this video, I'll start with adding a Storage Center Array by clicking Add Storage Center. Enter the host name or IP address of the SC Array as well as the username and password, and then click Finish. This will take a few moments to complete. Once complete, the Summary tab across the top will show the status information, the storage summary, any current alerts, and the top 10 fastest growing volumes. Additionally, logs and alerts can be viewed by selecting the appropriate tab across the top. The charting, I.O. usage, and hardware tabs will not be covered as part of this video, but additional information can be found on the Dell Tech Center website as well as links that are associated with this video. This video's focus will be on the Storage tab. With the SC Array selected on the Storage tab, the hierarchy of Array Management is displayed. This video covers volumes, servers, and snapshot profiles, as these are the normal day-to-day -day management functional areas. By clicking the plus sign next to Volumes, existing volume folders are shown. If volumes existed that were not in volume folders, they would be displayed also. To create another volume folder, click Create Volume Folder. Enter the name for the folder and any notes about the folder that you'd like to add, and then click OK. Next, click on Create Volume to create a single new volume. Enter the desired name and size for the new volume, and select the volume folder in which the new volume will reside. Additionally, enter any notes about the volume that you want to include. If you want to change from the default snapshot profile, which we'll cover later, click the Change button here. If you want to map this volume to a server object that already exists in the environment, click Change here. We'll cover server object creation shortly as well. Select whether or not you want read or write cache enabled, and select the data reduction profile and the storage profile if you want them changed from default. I'm going to leave the defaults here. And if you want this volume created as part of a replication set or as part of a live volume, check these appropriate boxes. Once you've made all of your selections, Click OK to continue. As a note, additional information on cache settings, data reduction, storage profiles, replication, and live volumes is also available on the Dell Tech Center website. If you want to create multiple volumes, there's an action item that allows us to do that. That is the Create Multiple Volumes. For this action, select the number of volumes you wish to create in the volume count, enter the base volume name for the volume, the base volume name, along with the count identifier, will be the resulting name for each volume created using this process. Select the size of the volumes you wish to create, and change any of the other default pieces of information if you would like. In this case, I leave the defaults. And click OK to continue. Now we're provided an opportunity to edit each of the volumes we're being created individually. Or, we can create additional volumes if we want different criteria on another set of volumes. In this case, I'm going to add two more volumes with different criteria, and then click OK. When the list of new volumes to create includes all of the volumes desired, click OK to continue. This process will take a few moments. If an existing volume needs to be expanded, select the volume from the list and click on the Expand Volume action item. Enter the new desired volume size and click OK. Now that the volumes are created, we need to provide access to the volumes from the server. This is accomplished a little differently with the SC array than it is with the PS group. With PS groups, access policies are used to connect the volumes and servers. With SC arrays, server objects are created and then mapped to the volume object, providing access to the volume through what's called a volume mapping. I'll start this process by clicking the plus sign next to servers to expanding the tree object. Notice we can use server folders as well as volume folders for ease of management. I'll start by creating a server folder. Enter the name and any notes you'd like to include about the server folder, and click OK. With the new server folder selected, click on Create Server. Enter the name for the new server, select the operating system from the drop-down box, and enter any notes that you'd like to include about the server. Additionally, select the host bus adapter listed from the list below, and click OK. Additionally, with the server folder selected, if we are going to use a cluster, we can create a server cluster at this time. Since my server will eventually be part of a cluster, I'll go ahead and create a cluster now. Enter the name of the cluster, select the operating system from the drop-down box, 
and then click on Add Server to Cluster to add an existing server to the cluster. Select my Win01 server and click OK. And click OK to complete the creation of the server cluster. The server cluster object allows us to grant access to volumes to multiple servers at the same time. With the server, or in our case the server cluster selected, we have options to create volumes, create multiple volumes, or map existing volumes to the server, or in this case cluster. We want to map our existing volumes to this server cluster. When using the map volume to server action item, select the volume you wish to map to the server from the list and click next, verify the information is correct, and click finish. This process maps one volume at a time to the server or server cluster you're working with. However, by selecting the volume folder, you can select multiple volumes by using either control click or shift click. With multiple volumes selected, you can right click and select map volume to server. Then select the server or server cluster from the list and click next, verify the information is correct, and click finish. Next we'll cover snapshot profiles. Snapshot profiles are similar to the combination of snapshot schedules and snapshot policies on PS groups. To start, click the plus sign next to snapshot profiles to display the existing profiles. To create a new profile, click the create snapshot profile in the action item list. Enter the name for the snapshot profile and any notes you'd like to include about it, and then click on add rule. As you can see from the add rule window, the rule is the schedule. Enter the name for the rule, select the frequency, the frequency is once, daily, weekly, or monthly. Enter either a specific time of day or a time interval. If you want it to happen between specific times of day, check the between the following times box. Then specify the expiration of the snapshots in intervals of minutes, hours, days, or weeks, and click OK. Select the snapshot creation method of standard, parallel, or consistent. Parallel indicates that all snapshots scheduled for the same time should occur at as close to the same time as possible. Consistent means that all volumes being snapshotted by this profile will be snapped at exactly the same time so all volumes remain in a consistent state. I'll select Standard and click OK. Snapshot profiles can be applied to volumes or applied to all volumes mapped to a server. To apply to a volume directly, click on Apply to Volumes. Select the volumes on the list to which you want to apply this snapshot profile and click OK. Additionally, if we click on Apply to Server, we can select a server or server cluster object and click OK to apply that profile to all of the volumes mapped to that server. With the snapshot profile selected, notice the list of volumes to which that snapshot profile is applied. Alternatively, if you are working with a specific volume, you can select that specific volume from the list of objects and select Set Snapshot Profiles from the Action Item list from here, you can select multiple snapshot profiles to apply to the volume. Additionally, if this box is checked, it will replace any existing profiles that are currently applied to the volume. By deselecting it, it will add these profiles to the list of existing profiles that are applied to the volume. Click OK to continue. And now on to cleanup. Volume deletion can be accomplished individually or by groups of volumes. For individual deletion, select the volume object and click Delete from the action item list. If you're certain that you will no longer need this volume, you can check the box to skip the recycle bin and permanently delete the volume. Click OK to complete. Note that no warning has appeared indicating that the volume is currently mapped to a server. Additionally, with the volume folder selected, we can select multiple volumes by using the control click or the shift click and right click and select delete. Verify this list of volumes is correct for deletion. Select whether or not to skip the recycle bin or move it to the recycle bin and click OK. Again, no warnings appeared indicating that the volumes were mapped to a server. Servers are deleted in a similar way, either one at a time by selecting the server object or in multiples by selecting the server folder. Select the server object and delete from the action items menu. Verify that this is the server you want to delete and click OK. Note there were no messages indicating that there are currently volumes mapped to that server. The cluster object can only be deleted after all server objects have been removed from the cluster. With our server object deleted, we can now delete our server cluster object. And lastly, if we're finished managing this array through Dell Storage Manager, with the array object selected, click Delete from the Action Items menu. Verify this is the storage center you wish to remove from your Dell Storage Manager environment and click OK. As a note, this is not deleting the array itself, it is simply removing it from the Dell Storage Manager environment. 
Thanks for watching Dell Storage Manager Day-to-Day -day Management Part 2 SC Array Management. Please follow the included links for additional documents and videos related to the new capabilities of Dell Storage Manager.